My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to selectquote.com. Selectquote.com. That's selectquote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at selectquote.com slash commercials. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lies and alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a second full episode, a third episode, really, because I did the Petito Laundry lawsuit update earlier. I'm Gigi Fruit Loop. What you know? Did you know that ketchup was once used as medicine? Mm. So it was by, it was sold in pharmacies in like 1830s, in the 1830s, and it was supposed to help cure indigestion. Wow. So it was cocaine. That's how our great grandmas got so much work done in one day. I know, right? Yeah. So we're going to jump right in. We left off uh, on the last episode, finishing up our conversation we had in April of last year with Tom Ware. We left off around the time where Joe Ryan is attacked by Alex Cox with a stun gun. So before Alex left Texas to go to Arizona, he told a family friend or a friend of his that he had to go to Austin to deal with some family affairs. I think what's crazy here is that he traveled to do this. Yeah. Yeah, so August 5th... There's a pattern. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, you see it way back in 2007. Yep. Remember, we said that Tom Ware had been under the impression that Lori wasn't close to her family and that Alex was sort of the black sheep, but was very impressionable. So August 5th, 2007, Alex Cox attacks Joe Ryan with a stun gun during a drop-off exchange in custody of Tylee with Lori. The next day, Joe goes to the hospital for chest pains and also finds out he has a fractured wrist as a result of the fall from being hit with the stun gun. So here's how it all went down. On the day of the tasing, Joe reported that as he was leaving to go for this visitation with Tylee, he noticed a silver Pontiac Grand Prix with the headlights on just about three houses down from where he lived. And as he passed that car, the driver pulled his baseball cap down to shield his face. And Joe thought that was suspicious, so he turned around to ask a neighbor to watch his house while he went for his visit with Tylee. So after the tasing incident, he realized it was Alex in the car. And he thinks that his purpose might have been to interfere with his visitation with Tylee before he even got there. Because had he missed that visitation, it could indicate that he violated a court order. And then Lori could have filed a motion to suspend his visitation. So it sounds like he thinks Alex was going to tase him there. Maybe, or do something, Something. but maybe the timing was off because, you know, you see where Lori clearly would have done anything to just get Joe out of the picture. Yeah. So he goes on and has the visit with Tylee. And so what they do in these situations is, like, they bring her in 15 minutes after Joe has gotten there. Um, And Tylee didn't seem to be upset with the first visit in over a year, by the way. And the supervisor of that visit noted it was a great visit. So what happens with these waiting periods? They they give 15 minutes to where the parents literally just clear the premises and don't bump into each other. And there's no interaction that the child might see, which Tylee sees her dad getting tased. And remember, Lori accused Joe of assaulting her in the courtroom. So... Yeah. All that stuff. Uh, So during the 15 minute waiting period, Joe has a conversation with two people who would witness the attack. Uh, He signs out of the kids exchange and walks to the parking lot. Alex rises from the picnic table under the tree and approaches Joe wearing that baseball cap, sunglasses, a dark t-shirt, a vest and dark pants. 
And Alex says, do you remember me? Joe says, no, who are you? Alex says, you don't remember me? I'm Alex. What do you want? Alex says, we need to talk. And at this point, he's approaching Joe. Joe asks someone nearby to be a witness. The person says, yes, what's wrong? So Joe says, Alex Cox is my ex-wife's brother. And Alex says, we're going to talk right now. Joe says, we have nothing to talk about. And Alex says, yes, we do. And this is for what you did to my nephew. So at this point, Alex reaches into his vest or pants and pulls out what Joe thought to be a gun. Alex lunges towards Joe and tries to push the taser into Joe's chest. Joe turns the left side of his body as a taser deploys, which hits under or just left of his shoulder blade. He said his arms raised. He felt burning and intense muscle spasm type sensation. Joe starts to run away and Alex tases him in the back with a forceful push, which caused Joe to fall, hitting the ground with his right hand, breaking the fall. Then he rolls to his left to prevent Alex jumping on him as he is on the ground. So Joe gets up and starts running across the parking lot to the main entrance of that kid exchange building with Alex just steps behind him saying, I'm going to kill you from what Joe could hear. As he's running towards the main entrance, a second witness was leaving the building and he yelled from about 40 or 50 feet away for the second witness to call 911. And Joe yelled, this is Alex Cox. He's trying to kill me. So that second witness calls 911 and Alex stopped chasing him from about 20 feet away. When Alex realizes the witness is on the phone with 911, he just calmly walks away. And Joe and the witness both yell for Alex to come back. And as he's walking forward without turning around, he just flips the bird. Like, here's my thing. This is a place where this stuff happens. Like, this is where people go to see their kids. Under and court prevents, orders. And prevent stuff like this from happening. Yes. Because yes. we later learned that Lori's there. And so that means Tylee saw the whole incident. Yeah. Yeah. So Joe and the witness follow Alex to get a look at the car that Alex ran to. And it was, of course, that silver Pontiac Grand Prix. And he sped away. They don't know if anybody was waiting in the car with Alex. So the cops arrive and take witness statements from the two witnesses. And EMS arrives to check Joe out. And they see two holes in the back of his shirt. And at the time, Joe really didn't feel anything hurting. Probably adrenaline. I mean, yeah. you got somebody. First of all, you think he's pulling out a gun. I'm sure his blood was flowing at that point. You got somebody chasing you, telling you they're going to kill you. I can't imagine. This poor guy, after everything he's been through with Lori, here's yeah. her you know, henchman brother chasing yeah. behind him. So Joe later gives a written statement to police, and they photographed his injuries there at the scene, which included taser welts, abrasions, and bruises. So Joe tells police him and Lori have been divorced since 2005 and they had joint custody. Uh, then a year later, Lori accused him of sexually assaulting her son and he lost most of his visitation rights. Uh, Joe tells the police that there had recently been a change in visitation and that Joe would gain full custody due to Lori's mental health issues. And this visitation was ordered by the judge since he hadn't seen Tylee in over a year. Mm -hmm. So this was to acclimate her back into his life because it had been a while. Yeah. So Joe tells police he is afraid of what they may do to his house or to him again, and that her entire family had been causing him problems. And Lori stated she would rather have death than for him to have another visit with Tylee. Uh, Joe was afraid that could mean anything, killing herself and Tylee or him. How chilling. Yeah. Because years later, 11 years later, he would be dead and then... Tyler would be dead, what, 12 years later? Yeah. So Joe said at the time of the attack, he feared death or serious bodily injury. Uh, the police did a precautionary sweep of Joe's home, and there was no sign of entry or anyone inside. Uh, the witnesses provided statements, and the next day, Joe goes to the hospital with chest pains and is admitted for observation. His wrist is fractured and also injured his back. He provided police with a copy of the medical report. Yeah, and I actually tweeted this out and Facebooked it the other day, the actual picture. Joe IDs Alex in a lineup as the person who tased him. Yeah. 
So um, August 15th, 2007, there's an affidavit for warrant of arrest and detention is signed for Alex in Travis County, Texas. September 10th, 2007, Joe um, calls investigators in Austin to report that Tylee had seen him fall to the ground at the time of the tasing. Joe said if Tylee was there, then Lori was there to see it as well. And Joe's attorney was present when Tylee obviously made statements that she had seen this happen. So then we go to September 2000. We're still in September. Lori petitions the court to terminate Joe's parental rights. And a week later, Joe files a request for sole custody and child support to be paid to him. At this point, they're preparing for a jury trial to determine who gets custody. So think about it. So Lori knew where to go. I mean, Alex wouldn't have just known out of the blue where to go. Exactly. So she had to tell him. Yep. She watched what happened. I mean... Why isn't she be, being pulled into court for this? Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? He's coming from Arizona. If that has searched like his travel records or cell phone pings or whatever, they would have seen, oh, wow, it's just a coincidence. He's traveling from, you know, Arizona to Texas to this exact kid exchange. Insane stuff, y'all. Yeah. She, she has skirted so much responsibility. So many yep. things, had they been caught way back then, we wouldn't even know any of these people's names. Exactly. So September 12th, 2007, the jury trial was originally scheduled um, for September 24th. And Joe asked for a continuance because at this point, it looks like Vivian will be removed from the case. We just got done talking about all this on the last episode. They weren't sure if all the data and assessments that she collected on Joe, which obviously made him look very good because they were going to place Tylee with Joe, would be available for this jury trial. Joe even agreed to go be reassessed by a new therapist if he could get the continuance, which speaks volumes. Yeah. He's willing to go sit down with an entirely different psychosexual therapist and go through to say he's not a threat. Um, the new assessment would have been two different two-hour sessions, and they would need to be interpreted. And there was also some conflict with Joe needing to travel right before that jury trial. So he wanted to be sure he could get the test in. And remember, at this point, that sexual assault case is hanging in the balance. So ultimately, Joe just goes ahead with the existing court date. So October 3rd, 2007, as we know, they had a court date in September for the trial, but it didn't happen. So the new date was October 12th is what we think. Uh, Joe's attorney didn't file some paperwork in time. Uh, Lori asked all the evidence Joe was going to put forth not be allowed to come in. One of those being the proposed parenting plan and also a witness Tom Ware planned to bring in about the principles for Mormonism. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, was, you know, she was she already displaying these radical views that Tom wanted the court to hear about? Yeah. Uh, so she also asked for her attorney fees of $600 to be reimbursed. Lori files a motion essentially saying she wants to refrain from anything that would make her look bad and not be allowed to be brought into trial. Uh, there was actually a list of 30 to 40 things, um, such as any mention she is a Mormon, any mention that either party is rich or poor. She didn't want the jury to hear the phrase, you should put yourself in Joe Ryan's shoes. Uh, so Tom Ware and Vivian Lewis, who we know they've had over 30 years of experience, not be allowed to testify, saying they don't have the experience to give expert opinions. We've seen this. Yeah, we've seen this. Like, okay, they are considered experts. Right. Um, she doesn't want the arrest of her dad brought in, and this may show a history of defiance to the courts. Any evidence of the alleged altercation of Joe and Alex, which alleged, I think is a big deal. Alleged. They've got police reports and like witnesses and injury photos. But before we go any further, we are going to stop and do our paid sponsorship for this episode. We're grateful. This is how we're able to do what we do. And we appreciate you guys listening. So our next partner product, uh, I literally use it every day. Uh, I started taking AG1 because I wanted to boost my immune system and start to build up a better overall gut health. Athletic Greens is now a part of my everyday healthy routine. AG1 definitely promotes better health. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on complicated supplement routines to recover, which cost him almost $100 a day. He created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal, optimal nutrition routine on your own. So Fruit Loop, what is in this stuff? 
So with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And I will just say that I went on a weekend trip, and AG1 was so easy to take with me. You get these little easy uh, packet travel packets. Uh, you also get like a bottle to mix it in. The packaging is really cool. Yeah, it is. Um, I was able to make healthy choices while also vacationing. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's exactly why Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is recommended by professional athletes. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash what the world. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash what the world to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Guys, try it out. It's awesome. It's really good. I'm I'm not even kidding. So my brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. We're back to it. The jury trial for custody happens. Now, here's the kicker, and this is just, you know, the cherry on top for how unfortunate everything went for Joe Ryan. A couple of days prior to that jury trial about custody, a grand jury does not indict Joe on the child molestation charges. But the problem is the decision was not made available to Joe in time for the custody trial. And remember the big saying, a grand jury will indict a ham sandwich. Yep. They chose not to. So at this point, Tom Ware has been replaced with Mary Fogle as guardian ad litem for Tylee. She said at this point, she can't recommend anything other than supervised visitation with Tylee and Joe based on the pending criminal case. But if there's a reliable psychosexual assessment that rules out risk and Joe is exonerated, the visit should go to standard visitation, such as unsupervised overnights every other weekend, you know, just your normal um, custody schedule. Yep. And she also doesn't think that Lori and Joe have the ability to be what they call joint managing conservators. So she would recommend Lori be managing conservator, but with a requirement to be in counseling specifically to manage her anxiety in a way that doesn't damage the kids. What happens, Fruit Loop? Of course. So in the end, Lori gets full custody of Tylee. Joe's attorney gets statements from the jury that gave Lori custody. And some say, had they known Joe wouldn't have been indicted, they would not have given Lori custody. One juror specifically said, had I known the criminal charges pending in Hayes County were declined prosecution, uh, they would not have voted to appoint Ms. Vallow as managing conservator of the child. It was my belief and the belief of many jurors that the possibility of Tylee being taken away from Mr. Ryan because of subsequent prosecution was not in Tylee's best interest. I decided that leaving her with Ms. Vallow until the Hayes County charges were settled, no matter what I felt about her parenting skills, was in Tylee's best interest. And I see their, their thing there. I understand that. You don't want to rip the kid back and forth. Right. Uh, it's just so unfortunate that the jury, the grand jury said, no, there's nothing here. We're not, you know, it, it, that, that right there, that they just can get that paperwork submitted in time with the decision. Boom. You see, again, she kind of slithers away getting what she wants. Yeah. So on October 26, 2007, in a filing to the judge, Joe's attorney says he's never understood why the Vivian Lewis analysis was no good. Other than the fact it was pro Joe and anti Lori. She's a flight risk. She speaks to dead people she needs a thorough psychiatric and psychosexual evaluation. 
she should have supervised visitation. It also says when Lori received Vivian's analysis of Joe back in July, she didn't complain about the results that was pro Joe. She complained about the affidavit from Vivian Lewis that said she was a flight risk. So that goes to show you, you say something bad about me. That's what she takes. So yep. ultimately the test results said Joe was a low risk as a past offender or a future offender. And in the filing, it says Mary Fogle also didn't let Joe retake the assessment. And Joe is perplexed by this decision, but ultimately he has a second psychosexual evaluation. And it says the previous case involving Colby was closed because child protective services were unable to determine uh, that the allegations involving both uh it was let's see i'm trying what was it they couldn't deter unable to be determined with colby but with tiley child protective services ruled the <clears throat> allegations were ruled out yeah but you know this is so lori if you look yeah. at her history anybody she's done with she will make the worst allegations that they've done something so terrible to her to get yeah. them out of her life look at when charles you know, when she started listening to Chad, suddenly it's, oh, she's telling her family, oh, he's been with prostitutes. He's had, he's got two women in California he's keeping up. It's, you see what I'm saying? It's such a pattern with her. <clears throat> yep. So what do they go on to say, Fruit Loop? Uh, they go on to say no reason to believe anything did or will happen with Tylee by Joe in a sexually abusive way. And there's no reason visitation should be stopped. I mean, he's still fighting to see his kid. Yeah. Um, so it, November, it, it, oh, go ahead. yeah. So November 28th, Joe asked for a new trial to reconsider custody and the judge denied the request. Uh, and that's heartbreaking because we know that the grand jury threw everything out. So you would think right. that would be a reason. It should be an even custody playing field at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So towards the end of 2007, Joe gets a new attorney uh, December 4th of 2007, Alex was indicted by a grand jury in Travis County, Texas. The indictment was for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, causing serious bodily injury on Joe Ryan. Uh, in March of 2008, Alex pleads guilty and is sentenced to 90 days in jail. Uh, May 27th, 2008, Alex sends a letter to a friend, Mary, asking her to call his mom, Janice, to find Joe Ryan. He wrote, call Janice and ask her to put Joe's address on a postcard and his license plate number. Thanks. How was he not kept in longer for like trying to get somebody hurt? Yeah, it, so, it makes no sense. June 24, 2008, Alex writes his friend Mary again. The world is coming undone. The pedophile is unpunished and I'm in jail. I guess it's time for the apocalypse. Can you get a picture from Lori of one of her ex-husbands and send it to me? Some guys would like to hang out with him. So early 2008, Alex is released from jail. He goes back to Phoenix. He actually talks about his jail time and the tasing incident in a stand-up routine. And he says, I quote, have you ever done something you knew was the right thing to do, but it turns out later on it was a felony? This is a true story. I found out that my ex-brother-in-law was a pedophile. So I, I took a stun gun and I discharged it right at his crotch. And in Texas, that's a felony. He said he expected a medal, but he got three months of jail instead. So, I, I mean, uh, 90 days, I think it was actually a year he was sentenced to, but they, you know, first time offender, he got 90 days. And he's still right. trying to get Joe, like, hurt in jail. And and we see Alex is a liar because all the evidence, he didn't stun him in the crotch. He stunned him in the shoulder and the back. Right. So just, um, we're going to jump ahead in the timeline for just a second. In 2011, Alex was actually ordered by the court to pay Joe Ryan $5,000 in restitution for the taser. Alex is put on probation. So I think that we, we could end here since we've, um, done two today. There's probably one more. And I think it's just fair to Joe Ryan that we finish up this custody battle, um, because Joe's no longer here to tell his story. We have 1,700 pages of documents that tell his story. Yeah. So um, that's how we're going to do it, guys. We're, we're just, this is going to be a very long series, but it's so important to tell the whole story as we know it. Yeah, and I want to say, he knew how bad Lori was, and he could have very easily threw in the towel, but he still went up against that huge 
mountain against him and because he wanted to see his kid. And after what he thought was going to kill him by Alex, still yeah. thought to be in Tylee's life. We've yeah. got one more episode of this, and, and then I think we'll be done with the custody issue. But, you know, Joe Ryan, and we, we've we always said Colby's recollection of events, we do not question. That is his story. We don't tell it. Um, but I do think in regards to Tylee, I think it was made up, pushed by Lori, what she put that child through, having to have a five-year-old have internal examinations because you're concocting a story that every professional that saw her said was false. That, when you know, it's like people always said, well, Lori was a good mother. On the surface, yeah. But when you get these 1,700 pages, Lori was a terrible mother. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. So, guys, we're going to keep going in this series. We appreciate y'all listening. It seems like you guys are enjoying it. Share it with your friends that don't know much about the case and get them on board so y'all can talk about it back and forth. Until tomorrow, I uh, hope you have a good one. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.